So as a challenge, I was challenged to make a review of a wrestling video around the time I was conceived. Now, I'm guessing that since I was born in early May, that it was somewhere around mid. I mean, I am a Taurus. Like a ball. To reflect it. So I'm guessing it was around mid to late 1994 and so I'm going to do a review of Monday Night Raw from July 25, 1994 around when they're getting ready for SummerSlam actually and it's actually pretty interesting I like how it kind of has a 90s vibe an early 90s vibe like I see the commercials and some of those guys have the parted bangs and other Leonardo DiCaprio looking hairstyles and the way they dress too so that's kind of cool and what strikes me after that is how muscular all these wrestlers are I mean they're like I mean granted they don't look like Schwarzenegger type bodybuilders those nice toned bodybuilders but they, they, they look like they have a lot of muscle in them Maybe they're doing some bad workout routines to build them up in the wrong way, but... Again, they look a lot more intimidating in terms of physical body mass than the typical wrestler of nowadays. What else strikes me as interesting, uh, Randy Savage and Jim Ross on commentary. And we also get a little information about what Jim Cornette's doing at the time. I know he was in Smoky Mountain... Jericho was in Smoky Mountain at the time, with a, in, in a tag team with Lance Storm, and Jared King Lawler is also has has its little role at the moment. So the first match, and it's a response to the shit that was happening in the Superstars episode before, is Tatanka versus Nikolai. Who's one of Ted DiBiase's little lackeys, henchmen, you know his little bitch niggas that he pays for. It's a ten thousand dollar match, so whoever loses has to put up and shut up. And even by t even by back then, those standard of a ten thousand dollars is it really that much? I mean, speaking honestly, it doesn't seem like that much then. It doesn't. It definitely doesn't seem like that much now. Although, like, if I had to put up ten thousand dollars, that'll make a dent in my income. But maybe there's something I don't know about the value of a dollar back then versus now. But it's a great match and. I never really hated a match from this entire show. Every match I liked. A lot of powerhouse wrestling and shit like that. A lot of great in-ring storytelling. And eventually in this match, and Nikolai feels apprehensive midway, but Ted Diaz is like, no, you gotta, you gotta see through. So he goes back in the ring. And Tatanka wins. Tatanka was really over back then, I think. And he has accomplished a lot in WWE, even though he got screwed out of the Intercontinental title by Shawn Michaels. That sucks. But since Ted DiBiase is going to be a bitch, he'll, yeah, he does give him the $10,000, but he says, you could never do that to Lex Luger. And Tatanka's like, yeah, I, c I can do that shit to Lex Luger in my best day. Lex Luger shows up, and he's like, are you, you have a problem with me? And I know at this time, Lex Luger has the Made in USA gimmick, meaning that Hogan was already gone. At this point, he was in Japan, probably, maybe eventually in WCW. But he's gone, because they're trying to make Luger into next Hogan, and... Odds are they're trying to make him a little bit heel now since they have him allied with what's his face, Ted DiBiase. 
Okay, next match is the Head Shrinkers versus two jobber niggas, I believe. A lot of squash matches. This whole Raw is a series of squash matches, which I don't really mind since it's full of purpose with these squash matches. And quite frankly, the guys that are getting squashed are really interesting too, so. And it's not a waste, really. They, they could use the squashing. So this is a good tag team match. The Head Shrinkers are really fucking dominating these guys. It wasn't even funny. What's next after this? We have... And I'm going to move through this review really quickly. By the way, Macho Man's commentary made this whole Raw. Seriously. So next we got... And this is for what? It's the Hart Brothers, Owen and Jim Hart. Versus two other jobber tag teams. And, well, one other... One jobber tag team of two niggas. And Owen's on the camera saying a lot of shit. Trying to brag about how he's going to beat... Bret Hart for the title. They're mocking him, especially near the end, while they're squashing these two guys. And they are powerhouses. Basically, that's kind of nature of this match. So Owen, Owen looks like a freak sometimes. Yeah, he does look menacing in a way, especially the sound of his voice. However, yeah, they do mock him a lot. That's kind of what the big thing about this is. Because Owen beat Bret the Hitman hard at WrestleMania. But then Bret had another match against Yokozuna. And he won the WWF title. So I guess this is kind of what it's about. So they're eventually going to face off at SummerSlam, I believe. What's next? We got a promo segment with Alondra Blaze. The thing about this lady is that any wrestling name she has... It's fucking awesome. A London Braze Medusa. I have no idea. Just it's 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 an awesome ass name. And she has a promo with like Jim Rossing and she's she's ready to face anybody and Luna, a lady in Japan that's gonna they flew all the way there to face her eventually. So she's feeling up for a challenge. She's feeling brave, she's feeling tough. Then Luna comes in, runs in, they don't notice her until she's in, already in the ring. I thought she was going to come up and deck her, but no. Jim Ross is like, nah, we're not going to have any of that. And Luna's basically really freaky, and she's talking that shit. What made me chuckle was when Macho Man said, I don't know, what, a sexy voice or something like that? But that, that made me laugh. On the comment section, something made me laugh too, but it was for the next match, which was Adam Bomb versus Yokozuna, a kayfabe Japanese sumo wrestler. Just let that sink in for a second. Now, this is probably the match of the night, because Adam Bomb is basically... This is like the only thing that you can't consider a complete squash match, but... Just the in-ring storytelling here is ridiculous. You gotta see to understand. It, it. It's really good. And ultimately what happens is that Adam gets, uh, right when he's about to go for the win, someone from the background like trips him, some masked wrestler and with, with like a scrawny suit guy in the back. So Adam walks out being the hothead and he just beats both their asses and gets counted out. Which is weird. So it's not a complete squash match and it's a good thing it, it had this ending. Honestly, because yeah, the booking was better. And this is the last match of the night, which is some some guy with the trash can. Let's see what his name is. That's that's an insulting way to describe him. 
And this is already like Duke the dumpster Drews against some jobber that the, in the comment section they joked about this. They said that he looks a little like Hulk Hogan because he's blonde, has that skullet, and basically, you know, he, he has some funny ass tights too. So this is the quickest squash match I ever heard. But what's interesting is that. In the commentary, you hear Jerry the King Lawler making his phone call. Apparently, it took him forever to get to call, make the call, and he's pissed. And he just goes on in this awesome rant. The only reason I hit him with this trash can is because I couldn't find a baseball bat. And he says so much awesome stuff that when Duke is on television, it's not television, it's smell of vision. And that's honestly a little funny. So, that's kind of my review. Honestly, I like this, this time. Uh, it's really interesting. Every Everything just seems booked in a seamless way. Honestly, the pay-per-view matches that were made for SummerSlam do feel like pay-per-view matches, and they would probably be television matches if, it was now. They would probably show these things on free TV, but we get a lot of squash matches, and anything that we get, like, apparently they're going to have a, a few weeks from there, a rematch between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. That was supposed to be a treat. Think about that for a second. They don't just give that out. That's a fucking treat. But then again, it is a WrestleMania rematch, so... There you go. It's kind of actually kind of interesting. <laughs> this is kind of my review, and hope you enjoy that shit. It's Mr. Walker Seven, and I'm done, man. Put that worm saliva on my.